Your word of the day is ownership. Hi, I'm Felix. I'm a writer, performer, activist, and general chaos causer. I'm from Liverpool. I've just been in season four of Sex Education, and I'm currently working on my first mid-scale theatre production, Big A2 Prime. Hello, I'm Micah Onyx Johnson. I'm an artist, an actor, writer, and performer from Nottingham. So we were just talking about how we first met uh, through the Queer House, yeah, which feels like a lifetime ago. 20, 2018? 2018, yeah, it was a while. Like I was signed with the Queer House from when I was like literally just turned 18. Mm. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know what the Queer House was, it was like generally set up as like an early careers kind of like talent pool of like queer artists um, and turned into like the biggest queer agency for um, creatives in England. Um, but sadly, it's not together anymore, but we developed such a strong creative community through it. Yeah, I think um, the Queer House like has supported a lot of artists with like their first steps into the industry. And um, they were also like a producing house as well and um, like produced my play. The Queer House has sort of supported my journey up to this point where I'm at now. I feel the same. Like, it definitely, like, it can be hard, like, when you're starting your career to get in the right circles of, like, the people who are making your work, of people who look like you, yeah. people who sound like you, who want to uplift your voices. And that kind of gave everyone such a good starting point of, like, a creative community because, like, it can be hard as a creative um, to sustain yourself and the best way I think is to make your own work and that really gave you the foundations of how to make your own work which I believe is the only way to really keep going yeah and creative. yeah 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 it's like as well I think obviously we're both not from London either yeah so um I think that has its own set of like barriers we both make theater so I think our experience with the industry is probably like very different uh, for people who maybe just <clears throat> have been auditioning for things and we've obviously been spent a lot of time like making work whilst we're chatting about theatre making and stuff and like you know it's something that we both do but we've both um had other jobs that maybe on our own projects and you've obviously just done sex eds and um i'm just wondering like how 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 it feels in comparison to like you making your own work it's weird because when i make my own work i know why i'm making it i know what story i want to tell yeah. i know who i want involved i know what audiences i'm making it for i know why i'm making it but then when you're playing a role in someone else's story it's weird because it's completely different because you're making it for a different reason and you're in the room to kind of play a role to to um say someone else's words you know mm. especially in something like a tv series that's quite long running you know you're not doing it your heart's not in it for the same reasons but it like means a lot more in different things like when i'm creating work i know that a lot of the people who come and see it will be queer a lot of the people who will come and see it will be for mm personal reasons will because they want to go and see a show that they relate to that they can see themselves in stuff like that but when you're filming for something like sex ed or a netflix show it's like it's a worldwide platform <coughs> that even just your presence in it will mean a lot to people when when it's a it's a tv show you don't really know what that impact is on people you know as a feminine scouse person of color trans fella like i i don't know how much that means to people i can't see the impact do yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's hard to comprehend yeah. you know i have people messaging me like you know i've just come out because i've seen this I, mm -hmm. i've just like seeing your character i finally feel represented people that i've never seen people whose circles are completely away from mine and you don't really have that same thing with theater it's a lot more interlinked yeah so yeah it's very different it's 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 crazy to think about, um, but for me, my heart is a lot more in the theatre making. Yeah. I like knowing why it is that I'm saying something. Mm -hmm. I like having a story and going, I want to tell that story, but I find it a lot harder to play a role, for example. Yeah. It, I mean, it makes sense. It's like 
there's there's a real power in sort of you being part of a project that has such a wide platform. You don't know who you're reaching. Maybe there's people that watch the show that don't share your identity at all. <clears throat> but we can't always assume how people are going to connect with something. With you making your own work, it's like more you have more autonomy um, and you're in the driving seat. But I think, you know, things like that, that clearly have an impact, a positive impact. It's like it, you don't know, like, how it's going to change someone's life. I mean, it, it sounds like a really big thing, but I think that's why I think representation is important. Um, we we know, we know that more needs to be done. It's not just about, like putting us in yeah. TV shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, and like giving us commissions and stuff. I think it's everything else behind all of that. But um, I think in the meantime, you know, if it can give somebody who's trans, who's watching you on screen, like a, a bit of joy and a bit of hope, that's great. And I think also it's like encouraging other trans folks to sort of be able to lean into maybe wanting to pursue a career in this field. Yeah, that, that that's the thing. Like, I think what I didn't think about when going into the process was the trans joy that would be emulating in the show. You know, the character I was playing, Roman, he's a happy character. You know, his problems in life don't come from him being trans. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that often when there's a no. trans character on, on a show that big or any TV show, really. You don't see trans characters whose problems don't come from them being trans mm. and that was something i said going from into the process at the start mm. because when we went into the process roman and abby their characters were still very in the early stages of development and we did have a big a big say in in how they came about and i said i do not want to tell another trans sob story like my sadness in real life yeah i may be affected by my transness because of outside impacts and mm. outside oppression but that does not define me you no. know a lot of my joy comes from being trans like the the way i know myself so well aside from everything that's going on out there aside from being stuck in the middle of a culture war but still loving myself and and finding things that make me happy every day about myself like i if we're having this platform i do not want to be a sad trans character i didn't realize the impact that that would have on people like people being watching it and being like oh i can be happy and trans like my joy as a trans person can be respected and there can be story and value in it even more than my trauma which often does get exploited when people are developing trans characters in a more global platform. My, the play that I wrote, Pink Lemonade, it's like, now it's in a different development phase where it, it's it, it's had a it had a pilot commission a few uh, years ago. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm in the middle of like doing a whole rewrite on it. So, you know, several years have passed, I've changed and I'm sort of like, what, what do I want to say now with this sort of project that started in like 2017? And I think the, the finding the joy is important. But I, 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 as a as an artist, I still find it difficult to uh, to just focus on joy because I feel like there's all this b noise yeah. uh, that constantly has an effect on like accessing <laughs> the joy. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to be able to make the decision for myself if i want to uh make work that maybe uh doesn't just center joy it's profitable in a way yeah. it's like people they enjoy sort of being told how bad they are or like um how they can do better making work that does it explore joy you know it is an act of like rebellion in itself it's important to find joy it's just about simple things like we were just talking about how you know you you're, you're in liverpool and how like i don't live in london anymore but i'm here for work and there's something like i think there can be something joyous about that yeah um and sort of removing yourself from like the sort of like go 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 the grime mindset like yeah. you know 
it is. It makes my career a lot harder being in Liverpool. It really does because there's a great creative community, but everyone, not many people are able to do it full time. Mm. You know, like it's, it is difficult in Liverpool to make a, a sustainable career money wise off being a queer creative, off, off making theatre, you know, there's just not the same money and there's not the same opportunities mm. that there is in London. But my thought is like, but that will never happen if everyone who starts doing well moves to London. And and it's hard to kind of try and break the cycle yeah. of the London-centric idea of our industry, you know. Um, but it is important to me because there's mm. so many more stories up up north and, and in outside of London and, and we have a very different yeah mindset and there's a lot more community mm. um even though in London there's a lot more people I feel like in Liverpool every time I'm booked for something it's my friends yeah it's, it, oh it's you again oh oh yeah it's like you know it's the same people that I have dinner with on a Sunday that I'm performing with on a Friday mm. or constantly and um and in London what I sometimes found is because of the cutthroatness of parts of the industry it can turn your community into competition there's a very finite amount of roles so people adopt the attitude to turn against each other rather than mm. work together sometimes but actually what we're developing and realizing more in Liverpool is the more that you get them roles the more that it opens for the people and don't get me wrong I, lo I, lo I love the London art scene, I think that it's got so much to offer and it's great, but there's so much more outside as well that just isn't getting the same platforms and opportunities. Yeah. It's not like a fuck you to London because yeah. obviously I th I think if I hadn't sort of come here um, so like a few years ago, like I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing now. Yeah. So I needed to sort of be here because Nottingham wasn't offering anything. There are other people in other places. We live in a very like individualistic society where I think the word community it it isn't it doesn't mean what I think it really should mean I think um it's like this crabs in a barrel type um mentality where it's like well I, you know there isn't a lot of opportunities and you're right and I think one of the other issues is is like you know I guess as actors with castings and stuff like that um you know, if there is a trans role, that's when everybody will go up for this same role, right? And I think there needs to be, there still needs to be a shift in trans performers being seen for roles that aren't trans specific. I agree, I agree. Like, it's like, we only get seen for our transness a lot of the time. And like, oh, we've made this trans role. Like, aren't we progressive? We're only casting trans actors, only trans, you know what I mean? And it's like, but why aren't you opening your casting pools when you've got a any of your characters that you're writing as male? Why aren't you thinking about casting a trans man? Why Why is your inclusivity only like reaching as far as still having that prefix before the character? Do you know what I mean? I find that really frustrating when like I literally read a role in in a play and think, yeah, I could do that well, but I'd only be seen for the trans character or and it's like another barrier. But yeah, that's why I've been like focusing on making my own work. And, and like, we, I have a theatre company, Transcend, mm. and we only have queer people like in, in our plays and behind the scenes as well. Mm. And like, like, people are confused about like the logistics or, or whatever of it. And, and it. and it can be difficult, like being in Liverpool and having to find like a queer lighting designer, a queer stage manager, queer, because like there's not many much representation and recognition for that um it's getting more in the actors and everything but like the behind the scenes yeah. queer opportunities are still really lacking um so when we go into our productions that is like what's really important for us um but it does create like a better safe space for everyone and what we really want to do is create like them opportunities for the early careers stage managers for the early careers lighting designers um, for the early career sound designers who don't often get them opportunities. I think making your own work is like one of the best things that 
you can do. I, you know, when I was 18, I tried to get into drama schools, didn't get in, kind of like, kind of put pause on the whole like artist thing for a while and then had the idea for my play and then I started developing that. And I, 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 I think that's like one of the best things that you can do as a creative is just, you know, make, and, and also it's like knowing that the thing might take years yeah. to like, there's no rush. Um, but I think there's such like liberation and freedom in telling our own stories and we should be getting money and we should be able to put on big productions. The shift is happening in a very small way, but it is, I, I do think it is shifting. It is slow. Yeah. <laughs> it is slow. But, yeah, I think, you know, it's, there's something really amazing about being able to just like collaborate with people that you trust and that also are aligned with you. Um, and I think even then, you know, making work is not an easy thing. It's like, you know, it's a combination of different energies and people, regardless of like, if you're trans or queer. Yeah. But I think there is something really like beautiful in, um, having ownership yeah yeah and even if you get like 10 people that come and see the show um i think that's amazing I, I i was thinking back to like when i first started sharing like tiny snippets of pink lemonade like way back when and i did some sharings in like community centers with like audiences that <laughs> were not we're not queer and we're not <laughs> trans and it was like really overwhelming and like vulnerable they received the work. They might not have understood me. They might have been like, but they they did receive the work. And I think the more money you make or the bigger the platform becomes, it's easy to sort of forget that time. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's really important, especially if you're a maker, like, uh, like, yeah, we have to make money, like we do. But I think there's something really um, humbling, remembering, like, where you started i think like because of the financial strain in our industry a lot of the value of work can often be based upon how much money you're making the impact how many tickets you're selling how yeah. many people it reaches but i always find the work that means the most to me is for the smallest audiences because when you start having to fill seats meet funding requirements when you have to start doing that you start having to add capitalist yeah. constraints onto it. You have to start thinking, oh, well, this needs to make this much money, so I need to do this. Oh, well, this needs to fit this criteria, so I need to do this, rather than like, oh, I'm doing this because I want to tell this story. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I never see anyone speak about this and I want to speak about this. Oh, I had this idea for this thing and I want to share it with people. It stops being about that. It starts being like, oh, well, this theatre wants it and this theatre, they only commission things if X, Y, and Z. As you say, we have to make money. You know, this is our living. This is what we do full time. But when the focus starts being on how do we make money, it, it moves it away a lot from mm -hmm. why you started making it in the first place. I've been writing this play, Be Gay, Do Crime, for years. And, you know, I'm very um, strong-minded about having the people who have been on it from the start in every stage of the production, like my director, my producer, my cast, I, I'm very strong about that. And it's created so many barriers in me mm. getting it to that next mid-scale level. The theatres, they want big names added to it. They want they want this. And, and now, you know, now that like I'm the big name or whatever, yeah. I have more interest, but I'm like, yeah, but where were you then? You know, and it's like, and they still want like a big director and they want this X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, if you don't want my work for why I'm making it, then I, I'm not giving you it. I'm not mm. in a rush to, to give you it. I, I haven't forgot why I've made it and, and I can't move that away because that's my that's my baby. You know what I mean? Mm. Like like it, and, and it creates so, so many barriers when when you have your core values about your mm. work and when you're protective. But for me, it's it's really important. But it does put me in such predicaments. I wish that like a lot more theatres, um, especially the big ones, remembered why we put on theater and i know that there is a big strain and and like you know theaters aren't selling as many tickets so and so but i think they could actually sell tickets if they went back to the core values of theater it's because a lot of theater goers go and see shows now and they think 
well, they've put that on as a money grab. And then that steers people away from coming back. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's going to take a lot of like integrity and, and core values to, to break that cycle. But I do think it's happening. And with theatres like the Bush and everyone who care about the, the, the work they're making um, and, why, and why they're making it, I think that that is helping. But yeah, that I think there is a really huge problem in, in the theatre industry right now with... Yeah. With... Um, Capitalism. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think this is like an ongoing conversation about fear at the minute. I feel like there's no right or wrong way. It's like we have to earn money. And I think it's trying to find a balance of like saying no to this thing or yes to this thing. We, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like, what does it say about our character? What does it, you know, what will people think of me? You know, but nothing is that simple it's like not that nuanced it's not that binary do you know what i mean yeah. it's difficult but i think actually if just constantly having a conversation with yourself about it it's like the best thing that you can do and i think with theaters they just need to be really open to conversation they they would maybe uh, uh, call it a risk but i i think what we've seen is they constantly make work that isn't received very well and they think it is going to be like the thing that is going to bring in money and stuff but i think there needs to be more balance i agree it's frustrating for me to see regional theaters who are bringing shows in because they've done well elsewhere and not focusing on the the region stories you know i think we we have that problem a lot sometimes in liverpool where it's like oh this show's done really well in london so let's bring it to liverpool and it's like um maybe this show could do really well in liverpool and then london will want it you know what i mean yeah. like it's like it's like if you commission local artists then the then the people who are in that region will relate to that story and they will want to come and see it mm. and it's like frustrating for me that that has kind of been completely missed in booking and then they're like oh we haven't sold many tickets to this show that has been doing really well in other places and it's like yeah it's been doing well in other places but what will do well mm. here <laughs> You know, I've just come off the back of that big job and everyone's like, what's next? What's next? What are you doing next? What are you doing next? What are you doing next? I'm like, I'm like, I'm having a nap. I'm, I'm going, going to, to sleep. bed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to sleep. Yeah, I'm yeah, going for to real. sleep. Yeah, I'm having a bath. Yeah. I'm going to bed. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. like, I'm knackered. Like, yeah. I'm so tired. Yeah. And, then, and then it's like, and people are always like, what's next? And they expect it to be bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger and it's like actually no like now i've just done that big job i'm scaling back i'm coming back to my people i'm working with my people again and mm. now i've got a bigger platform to to show people what we're doing in the community i'm not getting i'm not doing oh this is bigger and i want to be on in hollywood and i want to be in films no i don't want to do that i actually want to be with me cat mm. i want to be with me nan <laughs> yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, i don't want to yeah. be i don't want to be in la or whatever mm. like people go oh my god where are you from i'm from liverpool and yeah. that's where i want to be yeah. right now you yeah. know what i mean like it's like it's like people always ex have this expectation and it's again with that like capitalist constraints and what we were saying before of our industry of like what oh expecting you to scale up in size of of production and of whatever but that's not what this is about for me i never mm. wanted that journey i wanted to make sustainable work that i enjoy making with my people who understand me and that's all i've ever wanted to do and yeah like you know filming for netflix was it was it was fun but it didn't align with what i want to do long term mm -hmm. it, it was it was great but it was the opposite i was you know i was like i was away from home for ages mm -hmm. with like everyone was lovely and i really got on with everyone don't get me wrong but i, I wasn't with my people telling my stories i was like Doing, yeah. doing the opposite. Imagine that can kind of feel like an, a, a quite a lonely experience as well. Like what, you're, what you just said about, you just did this big job and people are like, so what are you doing next? And you're like, I'm trying to have a bath and have a nap. <laughs> and actually I think that's kind of like a real testament to you as a person to do a job like that and then go, but I'm going back to Liverpool and this is what I'm doing because I, I, I imagine for a lot of people that are in our industry that have like, you know, had had multiple big jobs it can really take a toll on people. And I think it, it's it's really easy to sort of lose maybe like a sense of self or, or, or what you're doing, you know? Um, and I think 
I actually think those big jobs can be can be really great in a lot of ways, you know, profile and, and finances, all those kind of things. But um, I think because you're a maker and you come from, and maybe also it's about where you come from, there's a different sort of mentality and it, it can be really hard to sort of like hold on to that as mm. you sort of become more successful. I, I don't think we should also measure success on like, you know, the platform. Sometimes I chat to other artists about like, you know, we'll be having conversation about what they want to do next. And I th and I also think that's amazing to sort of be like, this, this, is, this is the plans and goals I have for myself. But I think as well, it's like, acknowledging that you're already doing the thing. Yeah. You already are an artist, you're already doing it. If you, tomorrow you decided, oh, I don't want to, I actually don't want to do this anymore. You've already done it. You've already done the thing. That, yeah. That's like with your show, with Pink Lemonade. Now, obviously you were working on it. So, you know, taking it to Fringe and then taking it to the bush, you were working on it so hard. So consecutively for, for so long. And now you've had a bit of time away from it. Mm. Now you're in your rewriting process. Mm. Do you find it easier to kind of reflect on what you're trying to say in it? Uh, yeah. The last time I, so the last draft of, of the previous sort of pilot, uh, TV version of it, it was, yeah, it was a few years ago. So then coming back to it and then going into a rewrite, it's like, wow, like sort of really recognizing in how much I've maybe changed from that moment. And knowing that there's still something that I want to say with, with it, but in a different way, maybe, because I think uh, because the show is very POV and, you know, it's sort of like based on this version of me, I think I've, I've changed and the, I'm reading the previous draft of the pilot. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. So what do I want to say with it now? So yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting process. Yeah. Like also like, you know, transitioning from theater making into screen writing. It's a different structure and like a different sort of way of writing, I guess. Um, but still wanting to be like bringing the theater in into the sc the screenwriting because I I like storytelling that isn't so like linear or there is like some it's abstract and you know you can't always tell a story f just through like dialogue and like re in the form of it again and like I'm having the same kind of thing of like I've always made theatre and done that but now I'm like trying screen writing out and like there's so much more to think about with TV because with theatre it's like just thinking about like yeah putting it on and <laughs> what the show yeah. looks like and, and that but then when with TV there's so many more elements that you need to think and yeah it is a lot more um like classical in like its approach like you kind of when you're watching a tv show it's like okay now these characters are going to talk okay now this character like like you you see that but when you want to queer that form and you're kind of experimenting with things like the regular tv programmers are like oh no but we don't do that and it's like but you could <laughs> you yeah. don't do that because you haven't before but yeah. you could yeah people people want to watch it people want to listen yeah there, you know there's a couple of shows that have, that have come out that sort of are sort of you can see how they've been able to sort of like um experiment a little bit more but i think yeah there's there's a lot more barriers like um and sort of hurdles in tv it's a lot it's a whole it's a whole it's a whole, <laughs> whole thing it's a whole thing <laughs> we just want to see more we want to see more trans people on screen we want to see more trans people like getting commissions and working behind the scenes and giving the commissions yeah. uh, all, 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 all sort of like levels of, of the industry that that would be that would be lovely yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. yeah. It would make everything yeah. a lot easier and a lot better yeah like it is it is hard like when i tell my most authentic stories it is like to the smallest audiences a lot of the time but i do feel like it is shifting and there more is like a want for like us away from that like cis lens that right now trans stories on bigger platforms are having to be told through they sort of dehumanize us and don't see us as like full human beings as if people who aren't trans can't take something from our experiences and our stories it's like well we've been watching like cis people tell stories forever 
and we still take stuff from stories like yeah. you know because we're all human beings it's true I, I like you know everyone has a lot more in common than they have difference but then when there's like a word like trans which people have talked is so divisive over the years people don't see like how much they can learn from our experiences like me deconstructing gender like benefits cis people just as much as it benefits trans people like it benefits everyone to kind of break down gender roles like trans people are doing to kind of free themselves from the constrictions of like what does being a man look like what does being a woman look like because at the end of the day that doesn't help anyone you know like limitations on your gender it doesn't Regardless, it doesn't help yeah, anyone it's yeah all try exa exactly exactly helps this. everyone and like like the more platforms and, and chances we get to talk about stuff like that the more that it can impact and people can hear the reality of like free yourself from gender because what has it ever done for you yeah <laughs> yeah this conversation is like it's made it's put a lot of things into perspective you know what i mean like sitting down and being mm -hmm. like oh what point am i at in my life right now like oh, regardless of all the stuff other stuff that's been going on and capitalist affirmation blah 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 mm -hmm. like it makes you remember like this is community like we're yeah we've come back into each other's lives to have this conversation yeah. when we're at like when we've been working when we've had like similar journeys and we've both been working like consistently on ourselves and making yeah. work for the last few years but it's not often we get like opportunities to kind of sit no down i feel like, like it, the way that it's aligned i feel like everything actually happens for has a purpose and a reason yeah so yeah i feel like we're from our conversation it feels like there's a lot of like similar feelings around a lot of things I agree. Um, and i haven't seen many people talking about them either <laughs> no 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 but i think i think it's important for you on your journey and so am i and yeah, yeah. I've, it's been really nice to sit and, and yeah. chat with you and chin wag it has, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. thank you to anthems as well for having us because yeah it's nice to get the opportunity to yeah. kind of say what you want to say and like have um honest conversations because a lot of the time our industry doesn't really want us to have them <laughs> <laughs> yeah no thank you